Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Christopher Andres. I am uh, honored to be a member of the Medical Alumni Council uh, Medical Executive Committee, and even more honored to be a participant in the Medical Alumni Council Medical Mission Trip. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about our Haiti Mission Trip. I'm here with Kathleen Healy, who is a, a returning student uh, who had served with us on the team on our last mission trip, and uh, will have the um, uh, opportunity to return with us to Haiti. I want to talk to you briefly a little bit about global health and and to begin with um, the process of global health there's an article uh, an essay that was uh, distributed amongst our team by one of our team members Dr. Sarah Gonzalez uh, written by a Dr. Uh, Rachel Naomi Raymen. The article talks about helping fixing serving. To actually help an individual uh, life is seen as actually weak to fix an individual, life is seen as broken. However, to truly serve, life is seen as whole. Fixing and helping may be the work of the ego, service is the work of the soul. And to truly help and serve individuals on the global health basis, uh, the process is actually um, connecting with them on a, a medicine as a human experience. Haiti. Haiti is a very interesting place. It's a short four hour plane ride um, uh, very close to actually to the United States. Two hours from Miami, four hours for us in, the, in a flight from New York. You would not believe that in a such close location in the United States is likely the, uh, one of the poorest locations in the Western Hemisphere. The, um, Haiti, unfortunately, is not seen for the rich cultural diversity and rich cultural heritage that it has. Haiti is often defined by what it lacks. It lacks a stable economy. It lacks employment. It lacks a stable, a stable solid infrastructure. And most importantly, it lacks stable health care. Haiti itself, then, um, is in desperate need for help. So our team has actually been um, having the pleasure of returning to Haiti on a number of occasions. The location that we go to is actually uh, sponsored by um, NPH Haiti. NPH Haiti is run by a father, Rick Frechette, who is a passionist priest who has been in Haiti for many years. Uh, father Frechette was actually so frustrated with the lack of health care that he actually returned and became a physician himself to actually provide that health care to the um, locations, in fact, where we serve ourselves. Uh, our, our team is based out of a location called St. Damien's. It's a pediatric hospital. Uh, it's uh, part of the St. Luke Foundation, which is actually sponsored by NPH Haiti. The location that we uh, serve is actually throughout the country itself. So on a daily basis, we're actually um, uh, brought to various parts of the country, and we actually have um, gone through a series of uh, uh, opportunities where we actually serve pretty much at the pleasure of Father Rick. We've actually worked in warehouses where we've actually sorted supplies. We've actually helped Father Rick in the hospital itself. We've helped Father Rick um, at the daily morning mass. Most importantly, in the in most recent years, uh, we've actually had more direct patient contact, uh, providing uh, services to some of the most um, underserved population in, in Haiti itself. Our days are, are starting off with morning mass. Morning mass uh, is probably one of the best experiences that we have there as far as with Father Rick and then uh, with uh, two of his assistants, Father Enzo and Father Hugo. Morning mass in Haiti often is actually a funeral mass, uh, more so than anywhere else I've seen uh, in the United States. Uh, death is actually a, a common feature that, that happens in, in Haiti. And morning mass is a process that, on a daily basis, um, uh, it's something that we, we, we actually participate in on a regular basis. After morning mass, our team gathers its supplies. We're placed on a truck, and we're driven somewhere in the country, and we set up what we refer to as mobile clinics. Mobile clinics are where we actually set up a couple of tables and some chairs, and people line up, and we see as many as we can see, bringing care to locations where healthcare is not otherwise accessible. In fact, one location in the mountains itself, our team is actually the only team in the country that actually goes to this particular location. So these individuals 
uh, these, these people have an opportunity once a year to get health care, and oftentimes they're walking up to two to three hours just to get to the location where we're at. In, in most recent years, the um, care that we provide has been direct patient care, and it's been an excellent opportunity for us to actually share with the students who are on our team uh, experience as um, physicians and, and medicine as a more human experience. What I'd like to do is ask Kathleen Healy to share a little bit about some of her experience and some of the things that she has actually gained from the trip itself. Hi, I'm Kathleen Healy. I'm a senior here at the university this year and I had the pleasure of going to Haiti last January with um, the doctors, the group of doctors that went with me. I also am going back this year. So I'm very excited about that and very excited to talk to all of you about my experience in Haiti last year. So as soon as I went on the um, a retreat with the HPO, um, I knew I wanted to go on the medical mission trip to Haiti. I went on it all three years and um, I heard different doctors and students talk about their experience in Haiti and knew that I was interested in global health and wanted to partake in this experience. I selfishly knew I would probably get a lot more out of this trip than the people I was serving, and I was definitely right. When I came back from Haiti, I tried to show my parents, my family, my friends, different pictures from my experience, and I really learned that in Haiti, the phrase, a picture is worth a thousand words, takes on a new meaning. The level of poverty that I saw in Haiti could only be known through true human connections, emotions, and experiences. I knew that every day when I had lunch there and tried to eat my granola bar, I saw children there asking for food and water, and suddenly my hunger would subside. Haiti exposed me to the utter disparities in the world and really made me more steadfast in my desire to eradicate them. I recently started a global health club at the school. The doctors that I went to Haiti with taught me astuteness, clinical skills, and a lot more. What I really learned in Haiti was the unique value of human medicine. A medicine that is focused on patient-centered care. In Haiti, there was nothing to overshadow the fundamental goal of medicine, to serve others and to do good, and to make a unique connection with the patients. I saw empathy used as a universal language in Haiti. We had very little resources, but we're still able to treat the patients. We had no running water, but Dr. Bevilacqua was still able to pull a lot of teeth. We had no um, instruments, but we had to drain some abscesses. We did a lot of things that we thought we couldn't do. On our final day there, we encountered a little girl who came almost two hours just to see Father Rick. This girl's name was Nana. The story of Nana is fascinating. I, I true believe, truly believe that, that God placed us where we needed to be. Father Rick was not supposed to be at Mass that morning. Our team was not supposed to be there. Nana traveled with her school teacher uh, several hours to get to our location, and for whatever reason, Mass was running late that day, and Nana actually showed up as Mass was ending where we weren't even supposed to be at Mass at that time. Father Rick kindly asked us to see if we could, uh, if we minded examining Nana. And Nana actually had been seen many times throughout the country. Uh, the school teacher had been taking Nana uh, to many locations for months. Uh, this vibrant five-year-old, playful, smiling uh, young lady was actually literally withering away. She was actually uh, losing weight, having fevers on a constant basis. And just through um, God's will, we had the opportunity to examine Nana. And I had the, the, the fortunate benefit to actually hear from them uh, afterwards. Nana received her care, received her care through Father Rick's help at St. Damien, and is actually doing well at this time. Nana was one person that we're able to, to serve and one soul we were able to actually take care of um, with our trip at Haiti. So if not, nothing else, uh, the, the trip is actually worth it. Uh, the, the trip is actually an important uh, teaching process for the students that are with us. It's an important process for the physicians that actually attend the trip. So there's, there's value for, for all that are there. And that value actually needs to be supported. Uh, the opportunities are bound for everybody to help with this. Uh, the um, mission trip does um, 
need the support of the Medical Alumni Council. So last year when we were trying to fundraise for the trip, we did a lot of going out and collecting medical supplies in the local community, asking local physicians, um, pharmacies, and hospitals even if they would donate some medical supplies. And we really got a lot of support and I thought we had a ton of stuff. But then once we got down to Haiti, the stuff and supplies goes really, really quickly. I want to thank you for the opportunity to share with you the experiences that we have had through the Medical Alumni Council uh, Haiti mission uh, trip. And then to let you know that any, everybody can participate in, in this endeavor. Uh, we actually will more than welcome any supplies or any amount of funding that we can actually uh, use to help. And then anybody who is interested in helping can help uh, donate through university advancement. Thank you very much.